thousands of varieties of dogs are there in the world. A Jane Great Dane, an intelligent border collie, an adorable husky, a powerful mastiff, an aggressive pit bull, and a very tiny chihuahua. Dogs are intelligent and adorable animals. Maybe everyone has a story to tell about a dog. But which species is actually a dog belongs to? What were they before thousands of years ago? Whether they seem like as it is now? If not, who were the ancestors of dogs? The evolution and history of dogs and how they began a life together with humans is a fascinating story. And that's the story for today's Green Letter. As you know, wolves are similar to dogs. But wolves cannot be domesticated and dog is entirely different from wolves. If we went to a wolf's territory, it is close to impossible to get back as we went. They will attack and wound us because they are very aggressive. But dogs are not like that. So we may think dogs evolved by interbreeding between a wolf and some other peaceful animal. Like how mules are born. But it's not true because a dog is a wolf itself. How? We need proof. For that we need to travel thousands of years back when there were no dogs. But before that we need to know how a wild animal can be domesticated. A Russian geneticist Dmitry Belyev was fascinated by the study of how the domestication of wild animals works. For that he experimented with foxes. Because its stubborn wildness character will not get rid of it. So they will not prefer human friendship. They will always stay away from the human territory, as well as they are very nervous and shy. In his experiment, he selected different types of foxes from various territories of Russia. The same kind of foxes is caged separately. The first step was to selecting the foxes to be domesticated. For that, they will come near to the cages and observe its behavior. When they see a human, how they will respond is very important. Some of them were very aggressive and even tried to bite, and some others were scared and tried to stay away. They omitted these kinds of foxes and selected the kind that showed somewhat familiar behavior, neither aggressive nor shy and scared. Then after, these selected foxes were interbred. This is called the selective breeding which we used to produce a particular characteristic dog. For their offspring, the same selective breeding has done. After the selective breeding of four generations, they found some interesting observations. The foxes began to bark and wave their tail. But those features were expected. Because when selecting a particular breed, a particular gene is selected. So what is encoded in the gene? will become its behavior. But still it's a fox, right? But surprisingly, one more miraculous observation they got. Yes, the fox not only started behaving like a dog, but also morphologically looked like a dog. From this experiment, we can arrive at an assumption that before thousands of years ago, the same has happened to the wolves. Natural Selection of Wolves some of the wolves departed from their motherhood and shared the same territory with the humans. And the wolves, which are more familiar to humans, stay near to them and interbred within them. As time passes, their offspring become more and more familiar to humans. And as we see in Dimitri's experiment, the wolves become a dog. But when they start a life with humans, and how this assumption can be substantiated? We need scientific proofs. Well, the fossils tell the stories. A fossil of humans and wolves together found from Zhukorian in northern China. It was 300,000 years old. And another one found from Lazar Cave in southern France. And it was about 150,000 years old. This shows during that period, humans and wolves share the same territory. That doesn't mean wolves show any companionship to human. Then who is the oldest wolf believed to be a dog? 
us from the current evidence. A 31,700 years old fossil found from Goyet Cave in Belgium is the one which was almost like a dog because its skull was entirely different from a wolf but has the features of a dog. From this evidence, we can tell the dogs are at least older for 31,700 years. As we get older fossils, this age will change, but probably not much. Since this is the oldest dog that we found, we call it a prehistoric dog. Then after from Chauve Cave in France, a 26,000 years old fossilized footprint of a boy and a dog walking together has found, which shows the dogs made a friendship with human. In 1914, we got another strong evidence that corroborates this companionship. From Germany, we got a 14,000 years old fossil. From the scientific analysis, veterinary doctors found this dog was affected by canine distemper. This is a lethal viral infection and it will kill the dog within three weeks. Until now, there is no vaccine found against the canine distemper. But if we give enough care, life can keep more forward. This dog lived for four more months because the human may take care of it and give food for its well-being. That's why this dog lived a little more. The last evidence is from Israel. In the ancient history of Ain Malaha, a ruthless tradition was there. When a person dies, they bury their pets also with them alive. It's cruel. Yet, a fossil found from there of age 11,000 to 12,000 years old was a human holding a dog in his left hand. These are the fossil evidences which reveals how the long-term natural selection of wolves became a dog and how they become domesticated. And now, instead of natural selection, we are using artificial breeding to isolate a particular gene of a dog. That's why now we have a wide variety of dogs. But did you know, this for the evolution of dogs or even homo sapiens, there was a river that started flowing in the sea. Is it possible? Well, that's a story for another green letter.